Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Build Evil Fortress Part 2, Creeping Evil. Now we're going to be alternating the Let's Builds from now on. What that means is we're going to be having Facing Worlds one week, and then Evil Fortress the next. And this episode we're going to be tackling the Evil Fortress once more. We're going to be looking at the platform itself, and explore an idea I read in the comments section from the last video. I like the idea of having Netherrack creep out of the lava, and begin to kind of slowly infect the surrounding environment. So that's what we're going to be doing this episode. Also, we're going to be looking at the design of the gothic arching walkways for the citadel, and explore the foundations and perhaps expand them even more. Now, first things first, I cracked open World Edit, and I used the Block Replacer tool to create a tool that would replace any block I right-click on with Netherrack. And that made converting the stone and dirt around the side of the lava pit that we have here much easier. So you see me here dashing around the edge of the obsidian disk, colouring in, almost, the bottom of the area, replacing that stone and that dirt with Netherrack blocks. Now the idea is that the Netherrack kind of stretches out of the lava pit, and the Netherrack is a creeping kind of evil environment that's slowly expanding tendrils into the forest and into the tree line to corrupt this world with evil slowly. Now what I also wanted to do with the creep here was to expand out into large sections because I had the idea that I wanted more towers than we put down in the foundations and I wanted the walkways the gothic arching walkways to reach over the lava river that we've got, over the lava moat, and reach out to other smaller towers that will be positioned on the other side of the lava, and I thought the best way to do that would be to creep out a little bit with netherrack in certain places, construct netherrack discs, and then put down these dark stone brick towers on these large sections of netherrack. It took me a while, it was a long and tedious job, but this creep was something I really wanted to do. Because once I read the idea for it, I knew it was a great idea that I wanted to implement. It looks kind of odd at the moment, but the finished effect, once it's all done, is something that looks pretty cool. And you really do get the feeling that the evil is creeping out from the lava, and the fortress is infecting the world around it. It's like a scar like a tumour on the landscape. You see me here removing the trees for a clearing section of Netherrack. And this is where one of the towers is going to rest. And then you see me here again putting down torches and removing trees from another area of Netherrack creep that's going to support a second tower. In the end, we're going to go for three towers outside of the obsidian disk that gothic arching walkways will reach over the lava and kind of grab onto. Once the netherrack was in place, I put down a grid, four blocks of stone brick, and then I created a square with those four blocks at the centre. And then you see me here rounding off the corners. Now you may remember the cathedral from the kingdom build. It has rounded corners that are kind of like turrets. Well, that's the effect that I wanted to go for. It's a very gothic kind of design feature to cap off the corners of a square structure with these kind of round circular turret things. And that's what I'm going for these towers on the edge across the lava moat. And there you have it, there's the finished creep effect. All that red netherrack reaching out of the lava, infecting the world around it. This truly is a fortress of evil that's going to infect the world and spread the blight across the entire face of Minecraftia. Yeah. 
again, I moved over to this creep. I built a guide stone brick line from the main tower you see there on the actual obsidian disc because I wanted to make sure the arching walkway would come from the center of that tower and reach to the center of this one. And then I created another square identical in size to the one you just saw with four stone bricks at the center. And there you see me just finishing off the foundations and expanding the creep. Now the circular corners are something I wanted to use on this main building for the fortress as well. So you see me there replacing the corners with those rounded circles, then cutting away at the lighter stone brick and adding in more arches for what will become our arching walkways. I then came up a couple of levels on the main building and the large tower at the back there with dark stone brick. And then began work on the Gothic walkways. Now I had a dilemma here. I wanted to use steps, stone brick steps, to create an arch effect. But the problem is there are no dark stone brick steps in the texture pack I use. So I had to resort to the lighter stone brick steps. Ultimately, I think it was worth biting the bullet for. While it would have been nice to keep the walkways and the castle itself a similarly kind of dark stone brick, the advantages using the lighter stone brick for stone steps gave me outweighed the, uh, the cons of it being a different texture and it looking slightly off. And in fact, in some ways, the fact that it is a slightly different texture to the main towers and the struts that hold up the walkways is in some way kind of a bonus. It, it looks a bit different, it's a bit of differentiation, and that's always a good thing. I then came to the archways and pondered on what I was going to build the triangular peaked roof on these walkways out of. I thought about the idea of just having them as stone brick and keeping it all the same texture, but it didn't quite look right, and wood just didn't seem right either on its own. So what I did was I mixed it up with a bit of stone brick, I kept the main theme of a wooden step roof, but I used stone brick steps where the archways connected with the holding holding struts that held the walkways up. I then hooked it up to the next tower along, so we've got a kind of T-junction there, and I decorated the sides of the walkways with iron fences and a little bit more stone brick that juts out to give it a bit more depth. Now this was, an, this was an important part of the build for me. I had to get this right because this is the thing that I was going to stick with for the rest of the build on all of the walkways. So once I was happy with that, I built over and stretched over to a part of the landscape I hadn't yet covered in creep. I added some creep with the replacing tool. And then I plonked down a tower. Now this is a circular tower, not square with circular corners like the other ones and I put down the foundations for that. Once I knew where that was, I reached over with the walkway, and then I started to build up on the walkway because I wanted the walkway to kind of have a bit of altitude change. I didn't want all the walkways in this build to be flat. It seemed a bit predictable. I didn't want the walkway to be a flat kind of thing. I wanted it to climb up as well. So you see me here experimenting with an archway and stairs that go up towards where this tower will connect with the walkway. It took me a long time to get this climbing archway looking just right. But I did get there in the end and I did get something I was happy with. I did a lot of messing around with wooden steps and stone brick steps. But once I was happy with what I had, I decorated it with iron grills and began to build up the tower itself with dark stone brick. Once I got to the level where the walkway met the tower, I capped it off with a wooden floor, and then I continued to build up. Now, I didn't want just a sheer tower. You remember from all the towers I've built, they can't just be straight circle cylinders. There has to be some kind of decoration and differentiation on the walls to make them look a little bit nicer. So what I did here was put it, cut out blocks of four, replace it with iron fences, and then cut out four on the corners and replace that with iron fences too. I finished with a design that I was quite happy with.
I went up a few more levels from where the walkway connected, finished the decorations and began to start thinking about a roof. And there was only really one material to use for the roof. I have to use steps, unfortunately. So that means I can only either use cobblestone, stone brick, wood or nether brick. And because of the creep effect, I figured that nether brick would fit perfectly with the colours already present at the base of the tower. And I wanted the tips of the towers to be very sharp. So you see here a very steep kind of cone. And there we go. The archway in the first tower is already built. Now to put things into perspective, this is going to be the shortest tower of the entire castle. And you know what that means. That means that all these other towers are going to reach really high up into the heavens. This bastion of tyranny is going to spiral high up into the clouds and would-be heroes that want to purge this land of evil and tyranny are going to have to climb for hours, if not days, to get to the peak and defeat whoever it is that rules this evil fortress. But before we decide who rules this fortress, we need a name for the Dreadfort. So if you can think of any cool, awesome, evil, tyrannical, deadly names, be sure to drop them in the comments section. Thanks for watching this episode of Let's Build, and join us next week when we head back to Facing Worlds and think about building the Sipsco base. Hit like and favourite if you want to support the series, and subscribe if you want to see more. I've been Sjin, thanks for watching, take care.